Motion to open. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so the first thing on the agenda tonight is the minutes from May 12th. Let's take a second to look at that. I read them, so I'll not make a motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, no meeting now, no appointments. All right, revenue update. All right. I think Dana handed it out to us. Yep, you take a look at your spreadsheet. Uh, I entered in June just through what we had in today. So uh, if you look at the June forecast, uh, we had it at um, 225, rounded up to 226. And through today, uh, we've got in 246 rounded up to 247 so we've already exceeded our forecast for this month and we still have um, roughly seven days to go I if you average out the 246 by how many days that came through uh, we've gone through so far uh, the average would lead to we if weather was uh, cooperates and we have the same type of volume we will roughly have 70 more 74,000 more to go before we close for the month. So um, with all things considered, Friday is booked. Um, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are all 100% uh, solid. And then we're starting to grow next week's T-sheet and we'll see how the weather transpires. And, and I'm sure that if, it's, uh, if it's good, it'll probably follow suit as to what we've seen thus far. Now we have seen a little bit, of, it softened a little bit during the weekdays with a limited income and people going back to work, but the, the demand is still fairly strong and the weekends are just off the charts. People are looking to play. So things are going very well. And we just had a monster uh, week with outings. Uh, it's probably our biggest outing week of the season with Father's Day incorporated in that. And so uh, it just got the bills and they're pretty high, but once the, the good news is with our side of it is with high bills comes high revenue because our products, you know, you sell. So uh, with that being said, um, we're looking at right now at 1.8 where we're at. I'm figuring adding where we're going to be roughly 1.9 and a half, give or take a few thousand here or there. And that would put us 37% uh, above forecast. So. Uh, it's we're in a great great place right now and we're getting nothing but positive feedback from customers on uh, prices conditions uh, services I mean it's, it's we're right where we want to be we're, we're in that that nice niche um, so I'll just leave it at that looks good another good year mm -hmm. yeah looks good Granted, a little bit of weather helps too, right? Overnight showers, perfect for golf. So that's right. The the year ends on the thirtieth of the month. Yes, a few days left. A week from today, thirty first. And as I say, so you Friday, Friday, Friday How much Saturdays. Do you think we're going to be ahead of last year? Uh, I put us at uh, one point nine and a half, roughly, give or take. So we won't beat last year. No, you're, you're going to run about 5% behind uh, last year's final number. But if you remember, everybody was still out of work. So somebody's got to go back to work, which means they can't play golf during, during the week. The prices of gas was a lot different. This yeah. is true, too, as well as food, food and everything eggs. else is a big factor. In Electricity. I mean, it, 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 everybody's feeling it full force. Yeah, and they steal a lot of stuff. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think they're, uh, I don't think we're seeing the end um you know, inflation isn't done My rearing its ugly head yet. Which now is going? Three hundred bucks. That, that comes in Dana, there'll still be five hundred and forty thousand above the plan. That's great. Be a great season. Any other questions on the revenue? I don't. No, I'm almost there with that. I'm not happy with it. Well done. 
Okay, so we have the expense update with reserve transfer question mark. So, if you don't mind, I'll jump jump in. I got a few things. Um, in going through my current bills, as I was telling you, I turned them into egg. Um, I'm looking at my RM building line, and I'm gonna, I'll email this to Ed with, with the numbers. My RM buildings uh, line item is going to be short 2000. The RM equipment is going to be short uh, 9100. My rental line item is going to be uh, plus, plus 2000. My telephone will be minus $452. My miscellaneous supplies will be minus $300, and my dues and subscription will be minus $586. Um, but there should be some, some funds left in my employee line item, advertising line item, and some, there might be a little bit left in the pro shop line item, but uh, as far as my biggest line item, which is food, is gonna be almost dead on even. I might have like 800 bucks left on that for the year end. So I will, I'll submit that to Ed and we can kind of balance out for, uh, where it's gonna come from. You know, just, just in summary, I had Nick run the numbers through yesterday. Oh, perfect. And <coughs> for salaries, we have available budget for the rest of the year, 85,000. So, so we're, we're in pretty good shape, mm -hmm. assuming that- That's everything. Uh, everything. So assuming that you your clubhouse employees stays mm -hmm. close to budget yep. and, and your maintenance that staff stays close, we're in good shape. And the overall, the other expenses, we, we had a balance of $3,700. Uh, as of yesterday, which did, doesn't count the bills that you submitted a week ago, which was 20, 20, 29,000. No, that, that was a pesticide. Uh, right, pesticide. That was a while ago. And at 3,700, you submitted this week or yes, last, yeah, last Monday. week. So, and Dan, you just submitted bills, and my, my tally is about 14,000. Mm -hmm. So he got about 15,000. So what we did is we requested, before the selectments meeting, we submitted a transfer from our reserve mm -hmm. of $52,000. And, and we transferred 8,000 to r and equipment, which, which, is, which is your, your, your mm -hmm. account. R&M maintenance equipment, which was 15,000. Rentals, maintenance rentals, 10,500. Okay. Gasoline, 8,000. And insurance, 10,000. So that comes to 52,500. So with that balance of 3,700, we basically got 50,000 left. Mm -hmm. and, and the 14 you just submitted, and the 20,000 you submitted, in the 37, so looks like we've got about 25,000 left for the next week. So and I'll, whatever, I'll, I'll whatever back, I'm riding out from where I'm at to get through to the end of the fiscal year. So the year. question is, do, does, does it look like we need any additional transfer? It doesn't look it. I don't think so. But again, we got until the last warrant is July 6th. And by the way, that transfer was approved by the Board of Selectmen like mm -hmm. and week. the Finance Committee yeah. last night. So yeah, so I mean, as far as your numbers are minor, there might be some a few minor tweaks, but nothing major. Overall, we're in good shape. But again, the last warrant is... I think the last one is... The last warrant is, will be processed on July 14th. Yeah, so all the bills have to be in by the 12th. July 12th. And really, it should be before the selectmen's meeting, mm -hmm. whatever that's going to be, to make sure if we need a transfer. Yep, so I'm already noted, so contacting we'll my on, vendors. We'll stay on top of that. But well, we should be in good shape. Perfect. That's 
good news. But on the revenue side, but on the expense side, maintenance equipment for 2024 delivery. Um, if you look at the handout second page, That's a list yes, of proposed or proposed list. Um, within that proposed list, there's two items, uh, T Cowan approach mower and fairway mower that had already been ordered in December. Um, and they, we were told that they wouldn't be available in December of 2021. And we were told they wouldn't be available until 2023. So basically what I did was put down the proposed list including those two items um, because they had already been ordered and um, and we have uh, there's basically two greens mowers a, uh, a walking greens mower and a transpro is a trailer that it can transport the uh, walking greens mower t collar approach mower is the other 3400 diesel um, that has been ordered and you know the green the, the greens cutting units were ordered at the same time um, then the 3555 is a replacement fairway mower again ordered in december vent track is a, a rough mower that's um capable of, of, of handling more um significant slopes um than our current machines um it's a little bit smaller width of cut but it does allow you to, in the future, add additional accessories to it um, to accomplish different tasks. Um, the sprayer, again, is the 300-gallon uh, sprayer. Uh, and then there's two aerators down there. One is a walk-behind aerator, and the other is a three-point hitch machine. Um, these are the current quoted numbers um, that I received um, last week. Uh, prior, uh, yeah, beginning of last week, um, and again, it's it, it includes those two items from December. One thing I would point out um, in this particular case, um, I think it would, depending on what we decide to move forward with, I think it would behoove us to look at um, taking one or two big ticket items off the list by paying for them and reducing your. Um, the necessity to, to finance. And the other I thing I wouldn't point out is in speaking with all the equipment distributors, again, ordering now, you're looking at earliest delivery of August 2023. Possib most probably um, a little bit later in the year. August. Except, I mean, for something like a, the, 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 wa the, the trailer, yeah, that's not a big deal, but the other pieces of equipment, that's where they would be. So if, if we make a commitment now, Delivery would be August of 23. Yes. They basically at the earliest. For the 24 season. Yeah. If there were any delay or whatever. Yes. So so we need to make sure that we, during the 23 season, we have equipment ready to go. And based, based on what we have available, we have that right. Yeah. Well, right now we um, we received the uh, the thirty four hundred triplex that we ordered on June tenth of twenty twenty one was delivered on June fourteenth of twenty twenty two. So we do have that machine, which um, came at a very good time because we have t that's the only three wheel drive machine we have. Um, the other two three wheel drive machines are down. What we're doing is we're taking those two three-wheel drive machines and using what we can to make one operative machine. Um, one machine only had the, the reels were not responding, not going up and down. Um, so after troubleshooting, um, we might be able to, we could probably take a switch off another machine or maybe even look into the power generating system because it doesn't seem to be generating enough power and storing the power. But when that is the case, then we'll have two three-wheel drive machines for T's collars and approaches and par three fairways. We can shift back to a second greens mower, um, 
by taking the one that we currently use to cut tees, putting the greens reels back on it, and using it as our second greens mower. That leaves us with the Toro, uh, excuse me, the John Deere um, to cut the driving range tee, as well as to jump in in, a, in any problem situation to cut greens because we do have a set of greens reels that can go on that machine. And our second John Deere, the oldest machine we have rollers on right now, um, which we use for rolling. Um, I'm waiting to hear from, uh, I don't know where the lease um, for the roller and the 26 inch uh, walker, what what phase of paperwork is it's in. Um, I completed the uh, necessary paperwork for the insurance folks and that paperwork has to be returned to the leasing company prior to them issuing a purchase order through Toro to uh, supply that equipment. So we're still waiting on the roller and the 26-inch uh, walker um, that we, uh, you know, that would, once that comes to fruition, the first payment on that lease is September of 2022, approximately $7,100. Um, but those so two have, items we're waiting for. Have we received them? Well, I haven't received them, no, because we, in order to receive them, the leasing company has to place the order through Toro. Um, okay. We, you know, we get the price quotes, but since, since we're being leased, the leasing company is the actual owner. They put the purchase order in, then Toro will deliver them, and then the, you know, as, as stated in the payment schedule, the first payment is September 2022. I don't know if the papers have been signed. There was a, um, the leasing company required proof of insurance. So Lisa faxed or emailed me a couple forms to fill out, one for each piece of equipment. I filled those out, returned those to her. I'm assuming that the, the uh, insurance company is, is uh, we're all set in that end. I just don't know if the paperwork has been signed or not. Um, it wasn't on any agenda for the selectmen that I would have seen. I don't know if it necessitates an agenda item since they've already approved it. It just necessitates a signature, and I don't know where in that process that is. So I'll have to get back to, uh, to Lisa tomorrow and see if we can find that out. And the, the leasing, I mean, I, I looked at this and I was beginning to talk to them about five-year dollar buyout leases and they really weren't going to give you I mean they said that we really can't give you a lease number based on today's numbers when in fact you're not going to be looking at receiving this equipment for over a year so I didn't pursue that any further um, but uh, and the prices um, you know though I get, again those are the prices that I got from uh, from the quotes off uh, that I requested for last week so, so uh, item two, which 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 is the which ones would refresh my memory? Which ones are due in January? In the January, fa yeah, fa farewell mower, right? Well, it, back in December of 2021, we you know we had approved the five-year dollar buyout lease for four, four pieces of equipment. T cow and approach mower, the fairway mower, the roller, and the 10 26 inch walking T mower. Um, at that time, uh, roughly in January, we were told that the cow and approach mower and the fairway mower would not be available till 2023. So at that point, we went back and redid a five year dollar buyout lease just for the roller and the 26 inch walker. Um, that's why I included the cow and approach mower and the fairway mower here because have, having not gone through with that original lease, there still has to be so separate arrangements made So that's item number payment. two, right? Yes, item yeah, number two three. and three. three. The ones that have the asterisks after them. Right. Described down below is the, um, gotcha. uh, were ordered in December, or <coughs> uh, that should be December of 2021, a little typo there. Um, so, so we already have an agreement from the Board of Selectmen enter a five-year lease yeah. for those two pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. When you subtract that's, that's, that out, what does that leave? The three, three, three items. Excuse me? When you subtract those those items out, asterisks, what is uh, the total? About 340. 
Seven. Yeah, so five years at least would be like seven hundred and twenty three. You have a three forty one eight fifty five oh four. Three forty one eight five five. Which one do you suggest to buy? Well, I think it, 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 my suggestion would be the two the two Hybrid greens mowers and the sprayer. That not there's three items there. Um, a total of about a hundred and hundred ninety thousand dollars that would knock your your leasing number down significantly, um, and then and, and that way you wouldn't be paying as much finance charges. That's one in seven. That's just you know, I mean I'm excuse me. Is that one in seven? That's one and seven. Yes. Um, I mean, you know, Dave, you probably know, you, I'm sure you know much more about financing in this regard than I do. I don't, you know, so we'll I would assume that would be a right, you know, a, a better choice than I have to finance as much. Oh, definitely. You know, especially, you know, if we're about to have a, like a third good year in a row, maybe if there was an opportunity for like an October town meeting, we could even submit something then or with the, so, you know what I mean, if we wanted to. If we needed a separate order right. to use that. But, but the key is to get in the queue. Right, to get the orders. <laughs> yes. So, so that's the thing. The two triplex and the sprayer, if we we agreed to move forward with those mm -hmm. and, and evaluate, you got a year and a half to right. figure out what to do with it. It's just make, making a commitment now. Mm -hmm. Right. because we wouldn't have to pay for it until it's about to be delivered, so. Correct. Yeah. yeah. If, if, the, in, if you were to buy it outright, um, Toro's terms for, for payment are net 30 days, and the lease all depends on the, the right. schedule, so. If you did that, would that, um, would the price if you go up? Get out of it, you can't. Was, if you go you lock in at the price right. that they quoted you at, how does that work? So. Believe it or not, commit. they won't give you a guarantee yeah, either way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they won't. They're not dumb. No. <laughs> so the need, and that's not, that's not just for one. No. The prices that we have here would actually skyrocket. <clears throat> the prices that you have there, yes, they could go up. I was not, I have, whether it's, uh, you know, red, green, or orange, there's no, no one is going to sit there today and tell you that they're going to hold the price uh, for a year and a half, or for a year on delivery. And I even tried to get, well, can you give me an estimate? And, you know, they start throwing numbers out like four and five and six percent. You can't said, even, whoa, 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 month whoa. to month, you can't, you can't give an no. estimate right now. I mean, that's <laughs> that's why they've actually, they, or China or something. they've even shortened the window on the, uh, the length of their quotes. You know, they, instead of making a quote X number of weeks, now you're down to 10 days in, some, in most cases. This is actually just a rough estimate. As best as we can get, yes. Yeah. How do you get a ten day quote if they don't have if they don't have something to say? I know that's a good question. It says on that's what it says on the quote. <laughs> so <that's, laughs> I read that down at the bottom of it, it says this is valid for, you know, and it gives a date Six period hours. and it's usually you know, usually ten days. It used to be thirty days. All used of a sudden, to be is double what, what we we planned on. Well, I think if we commit that we'd be locking in that price, though. That's part of it. Well, not a I, you know, I would have to, you know, I would have to, con you know, consult with the, the equipment distributor. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's what I said because I, yeah, you signed because it. I bought up the the T collar approach mower and fairway mower. You know, because if you'll notice, I mean, the price that was, even though we ordered it in, um, uh, we ordered it June tenth of twenty twenty one, that price is was what we paid. The price on that machine is what we paid when we got delivered. Right. Or we hadn't paid it yet. It's right. The invoice is right here. Um, but uh, that's what was um, that was the quoted price. So, but if the supplier has to pay more. You know, what right. <laughs> we're going to pay for it. You know, 
the price is going to be jumped up. They're not going to sell your machine. At, at, uh, yeah, no, I don't. I know, the, the only thing it, it depends on how how far it, they would be willing to cut into their profit margin. Yeah, you know, to hold. The, I'm sure they have this. You know, they've been dealing with this now for almost a year, so I'm sure they have this all yeah, figured. They, they, they have a pro plan in, in place and 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 they. Uh, in some type of rubric or you know statistic to figure out what they're going to do when, um, depending on price changes. I mean, everybody's sitting back, not willing to say much, hoping that things change. Mm -hmm. But I think the longer the you know the people who are good at looking at long-term forecasts are saying you know things aren't going to change until the hierarchy and the governing body changes, and that ain't happening in two years, so or not until a couple of years, so. We're in what we're in, um, and yeah. this is the best we can get numerically speaking, number wise, um, at this time for that this particular. Equipment. I mean, I can you know, I'll give him a call tomorrow and, and you know, you know, press to him. I was hoping to be able to possibly pick up a unit or two. That I mean, I don't know if you, you know, I'm sure everybody watched the U.S. Open. I don't know if you saw any of the non-golf things like the, uh, you know, the maintenance crew starting work at 4.30 in the morning with 15 or 16 fairway mowers and they're not all staying at the country club but believe it or not they were all sold even before they ended up on the cutting fairways up there as well as the 21, 21 walk mowers that they were using to cut the rough with <laughs> they are, uh, uh, walk rotors so but you know even when I requested almost a year ago they were uh, I was beaten to the punch, of course, by the people who knew what was going on from the inside. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not the country club in Brookline, so I don't, <laughs> I don't get that kind of information. <laughs> I thought I was going to see you with one of those push mowers, Steve. Huh? I thought I was going to see you with one of those. I push was, you know, if if I if it wasn't this time of year, I would. I've volunteered. I've worked over at um, at the TPC um, a couple times and, and a couple other. Um, Major events. If it wasn't for the time of year, I would have I would have volunteered and, and gone up there. But you're you're. That's that the busiest. A, week. It's a week. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you look at the count and say, no, 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 no. Sorry, I can't afford to take that one off. All right. So we got to decide. Yeah, we soon have to If we think we want to act on those, so we can at least get in the get in line for it. I think we should. I make a motion we commit the two greens more and it's square. Second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. So the two greens, triplexes, and the sprayer, you said? Right. Per your recommendation. All right, so I will. Get on the horn. I will get on the horn with Tom <laughs> tomorrow and get that squared away. Yes. Yeah. And I believe the when we pre-ordered the golf carts, uh, Jamie signed for those. I, I, so I think that's all. All we'll need is is that commitment from the yeah. town administrator. Yeah. Well, he'll be what they'll what they'll do is they'll send they'll send a uh, sign. Yeah, they'll send the appropriate document. Just make sure they send it to him because they can't you can't forward it can't go to Lisa. It's got to go to his computer for him to sign it. That's where all the confusion was. Oh, they okay. said the lease like three times, but you can't. All right. I will. I will do that. I've got a meeting with uh, Mr. Kelly next Tuesday, I believe, to update him on the fifteenth situation. I think that's what we're meeting on. So I'll hopefully have all that stuff in hand by then. Where we got? Poll number 15, next step. I am assuming that has to do, or I assume that has to do with the proposal put forward by uh, uh, Tim Garish of, of Gardner and Garish. Um, it was forwarded to everybody. Um, did everybody, uh, well, let me back up a couple steps. In order to proceed with that, um, I think it, uh, and again, you know, discussing costs. Um, when we hit our supposed limit, then we have to go through the bid, bid process. And in order to go through the bid process, we have to have construction documents, drawings, bid specs, and all that. So I had mentioned that to, um, to uh, Tim 
when he came out to look at the situation on the 15th hole. I also mentioned to them that in the past we had had some discussion about repairing the bunker on the left-hand side of the 14th green, and he had thought that that would be a good idea to do at the time because you're sitting, you know, it's in close proximity to each other. And then I said, you know, then I thought to myself, well, if we're going to make it a little bit more lucrative for contractors to bid on, because these guys, I mean, you, you can't get equipment, but you can't get these guys either. You have to, you know, the golf course construction people are basically straight out. Um, so I said, okay, to make it a little bit more attractive, we're, we've been discussing bunkers on the second hole um, and the tenth hole, and then that one on 14. And then doing 15, we have to decide whether or not we want to make the 13th hole a par 5, or do we want to leave it as is, which will put your course at, was it par 71 instead of 72? And um, then, you know, when we're, if you're going to do work on the second hole, um, you know, and I threw this one in, it, it, it's, it's uh, my recommendation. That bunker on the left-hand side of the third hole is a mess. The fairway doesn't drain right. All it is is rocks. I can't get the rocks out of there. Every time I turn around, there's another rock. It gets polluted by the trees. We have to do something with it. There been, when we've been throwing, well, maybe we can waste bunker out of this and that and the other thing. Well, waste bunkers are nice in Arizona where you have a foot and a half of sand and no rocks. I mean, that thing's all rocks. And every time it rains, it washes out. And the drain clogs down at the bottom and the green side portion of the bunker fills up. So I said, well, you know what? Now would be a good time if you're going to work on two. If not, so be it. Scratch it. But at least it's there for consideration. So. In summary, if you take those things, put them together, then what you need are bid documents, specifications, drawings, and so forth. Um, so he provided a proposal um, based on doing just that um, in preparation for the work. Now, from what I understand, you know, or, from, or at least from you know my two cents, of my opinion, I mean, the 15th tee is a must. I mean, they're just beating the you-know-what out of the end of that fairway. Um, and I think that T, to make that a, a, a more representative par 3, needs to be elevated somewhat. Um, we went out there the other day and tried to clean up around the edge of the pond uh, on the left-hand side of 15. We got everything we could without going into the water and pulling out the fragmites. And still, you don't really have that good a view of the hole. And we are going to have to address the fragmites at some point because you have them intruding into the lake, into the pond, and the pond is going to fill in, and you're not going to be able to store as much water. Steve, can, on 15, can can you cut the fairway? Can we pull it back a little bit? Use a little bit of the rough behind the fairway of the 150. And well, I'm a little. You know, well, I mean, you could you around? could go out you could go out there in the rough and cut it down a little bit and put the tee blocks back there. That's not a problem, but I mean, once you go out there and cut that rough down right now at this time of year, and this heat just going to turn brown and croak. And it's, it's, you know, you could do it. Um, I think, I mean, it seems as though people are, you know, um, people are dealing with the par three without too much trouble. It's just that, you know, it just beats up the end of the fairway. So the, the first week we did it, the, all the leagues were, you know, this is, it's going to be too easy. That didn't last long because they yeah. played it one week. Crickets. Nobody said anything. It's, it's, it's not really. It's, it's it really is not that three. easy. Depending no. on how you hit the ball, <clears throat> it still has a bunker in front that's protecting mm -hmm. it. On one side, you've got water on the other side, <laughs> and you know, with a little bit. I mean, I, I'm not talking a huge elevation. I mean, we're looking at elevated tee about as as high as that desk that you're sitting at. Gives you just a little bit more of an elf, so you can see more, but it also gives you that you know that perception depth that much better instead of sitting right on the right. ground it's kind of like I mean if you know if I was playing the 17th hole I would much rather play from the large tee behind the white tee than the white tee white tee I'm sitting down down right. there on the ground playing almost yeah. uphill uh, to that yeah. par three where if I'm playing back on that other tee I'm standing up I just feel more comfortable hitting from there than sitting down at, at the bottom on that flat I just spot. have a question and all of that yeah are we throwing away the net process excuse me are we throwing away the the net process on the right of 15 um I believe so I mean uh, when we sat upstairs when I sat upstairs with the uh, the town administrator and uh, 
and Mr. DeRoche's, and they, you know, whipped out the price of about three hundred thousand dollars, and then the question of who's going to be responsible to for the upkeep of the net? What happens if the net falls down or a pole comes down in that person's house? Where are you going to put the guy wires to hold up a hundred and ten foot high pole? Um, it is, was just is one hundred and ten even high enough? It's exactly because if you remember too the the T that you're actually hitting from on fifteen if you remain back there is elevated itself so that's going to give you more of an option to hit the ball higher and I mean I even you know, I've seen guys um, you know jack it into the middle of the street you know not in between the two houses you have the one house that has the water fountain on this side and the other guy's house and the ball's hitting the street and bouncing down the street you know so. I, I I don't know, Manny. I, I think the I don't think the the net is a really feasible alternative. Um, let me put it this way: I don't think that that is as feasible altern as an alternative as building a new team. Not not at one ten. Um, and you know, and and um, I think uh, I mean, the reason that I'm asking you that is because there's a lot of nets around here. I mean, there's. Uh, back nine has nets. Mm -hmm. Allenville has nets. Back nine nets and, are pretty and, high. And uh, and I'm trying to get some some little information from uh, Mr. White for about the back nine. How did he approach that? What kind of things he did? I mean, Mr. Rose made that decision with somebody else, but he's not here to defend that or project that. I mean, we had a group of three other selectmen. And well, I don't know, you know, I am then the other selectors didn't know anything about it. All I, mean, I can do is if you demanded and we just executed. That's how that went down. Yeah. It was right. And I mean, the thing is, I mean, I can give you my opinion. And like I just did, and you know, I don't think the net is as plausible economically for us as it is. I mean, I can guarantee you, I ain't building a three hundred thousand dollar T out there. And once I put that T, once that T is out there, then we can maintain it. it. It doesn't really cost us significantly more because we're losing. I mean, as far as maintenance costs are concerned, because we're losing the teeing space in the back. We're basically taking the teeing space in the back and moving it up front. So, and and we're putting them at an angle where they would have to pop the ball straight up and it would have to go backwards in order to hit this individual's property. And I just, you know, the liability of, of the fence, taking care of the fence in the future, where are you going to stick it? Because, I mean, the fence that exists there right now is exactly on the property line. So if you're going to put that big old fence in there, you're ripping out that cart path that you just put in there because there's no way you're going to get a 110-foot pole with whatever the base is without taking that cart path out because his property is right there and I guarantee you. So the you, appropriators you know, are on this guy's property? Yes. Then is that providing so we planted them there? As far as I know, they were, they were planted there by the owner previous to the fellow who's there now, to my recollection. Because the prop, because I went down and I, I checked when we were redoing, when we redid the uh, entryway, put the new gate out there, I checked because Dan and I were standing there and he and I had, and I looked at it, and I said, "You know what?" I said, "We're going to be here. Let's just make this a straight line." And we pulled out a little piece of paper, and said, "No, no, 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 we can't." And I said, "We talking about?" And here it is. There's the jog. There's the property line. I called up the assessor. You know, we're, we got that's the property line. It's the, that fence is right on the property line. So in order for us to put up the poles, I'm, I'm, obviously he's not going to want them on his property. Right. We're going to have to put them on ours, which moves everything to the left. I, I, I'd have to say at least 15 to 20 feet. I mean, the poles are only 12 inches wide, I mean, just, diameter. Just a telephone pole. Telephone pole. It's a, it's a foot wide. Well, yeah, what are you going to say? Well, I, I'm, I'm just giving you my opinion. I mean, Y'all want to go with telephone poles and well, nets. That's well, fine, let me, let me but you've got to get question. something done Let me done ask you another question. Now. What is the, the black tees going to be on the, on the whites with the whites on out? The, where the black tees are going to be where the green and gold tee currently is right now. Where they are sitting right you, now is where reason? they're going to be. That's reasonable. Yeah. So you're going to eliminate that tee with the white tie now? You're going to eliminate the tee. The long tee in the back. The back 
But if you're standing on the tee looking hole. at the hole, you're going to eliminate the tee on the back right hand side and you're going to eliminate the large T which is adjacent to where the water cooler is and where the cart path runs in front. Those are the two you're going to eliminate. You're going to pay black T markers. You're going to put them up on that uh, where they're sitting right now for the par three hole and then you're going to create a new T in front of it to house not only the forward T's but also the blue and the white T blocks. I think we need to get another quote. Yes, I agree. Th this is seven. Right, right, right. The quote is for wood poles at 72 foot foot high for 231,500. But uh, who, who decided 71 feet was going to do it? I'm just saying what the quote says. I, I understand that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not commenting on what you're saying. I'm yeah. commenting on how is 75 feet going to stop. Because the first ball that goes over the 75-foot fence and hits that house, the lawsuit is going to be more than the, the tee and the fence combined. I, Isaac and I went over to the back nine and looked at those nets. They are, they are tall. They are, they're definitely not 110s and they're not 70. They're taller than that, but maybe yeah, we should yeah. ride over and take a peek. We well, go it. take a look. I mean, I'm I'm open to whatever you want to right. do. I just think aesthetically and, and, wise. And, and this quote is for 550 feet length, which that that's yeah. way too much. I don't I don't know where exactly they go, started. You want to go from your gate? Yeah, you're just going to the house. You don't to, have to go past the house. The well, you want to go from the gate forward. I'm assuming. Right. Forward, yeah. right. So yeah. it's, it's probably 150 yards. If that. At, yeah. So you're talking... If it was 100, I mean, yeah, 100, 100 yards, 300 feet. And, and if that yards. was not enough, yeah, you would have a suggestion that you would put another pole... I said on, three poles. On, on, the, on the right side of the, before you get to the gate, and then you would cut that thing at 14 feet high, and, and so the trucks can come in, and the rest extend it up, and that will really protect that house. I, you know what? He, like I said, I'm just giving you my opinion. Yeah, I think it, it but I, I think we're going to do a little bit more research on that. Well, what? Are, how long are we going to let this hole sit there the way it is? It, it looks like it's going to sit there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, for this season. At well, least. then, then at the yeah, end this, of this, this season, yeah, at August. the end of this year, then I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do some type of renovation or something in the rough so I can put the yeah. tees back there because it's just, you know, well, the, the end of that fairway is going to be gone. <laughs> And I mean, I don't know. I just think you know. You figure with tournaments, right? You get each guy's going to take four. Right. Yeah, but it what is a the lot of bodies but, out there. So even if the, even if the only thing you did was do that tee, and let's just throw out a number of twenty five thousand bucks for that tee, you spend twenty five thousand dollars, you rebuild the tee. You go to seventy nine. They're playing the New England Amateur, the Northeast Amateur over Wanda Moisture. That's a par sixty nine. What's the matter with a par seventy one? But are you going to spend twenty five grand on that? Or are you going to spend two hundred and fifty thousand on a fence that you have to upkeep? No, that's true. But I don't think it's going to take money. Well, that has got what's that quote there, Ed? I mean, we can shorten it here or there. Yeah, it's two hundred thirty one thousand. Okay, say it's one hundred seventy five thousand. Still, it's one hundred and fifty thousand more than the number that I gave you for a T, which is higher than just the T. I'm sure it's. Not going to be twenty five. Well, this day and age, who knows? <laughs> I can't say that for certain. <laughs> but geez, I mean, that's one hundred and seventy or one hundred fifty thousand dollars. We could spend somewhere else by using one par stroke. I, I don't know. It, it just seems, doesn't. It seems, to be, a, seems to be a lot of complaining interest. about where, where the tea is now. Where, where you I at? haven't had any complaints. The Dana probably get more complaints than than I would. Um, it's more like a topic of discussion. Uh, like I said, the first week everybody was, you know, worried about their leagues, their strokes. It's too easy. I'm supposed to get a stroke there. But that, that is easy there. for us to buy the damn house well, and, yes, and true. ship it out and then do yeah, anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, but then we since, should send since our lawyer to send a letter to them. I says, you don't like the way it is? Well, let's put the house in the market. We'll buy it. You can buy another one. You guys have said they they would buy like the uh, the par four easier than it is as a pot three. It's and a, we it's can a put a luxury pot room there for the, <laughs> the yeah. links back there. <laughs> Make it the club levels. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I mean, if you want to get, yeah, if we, I don't know, um, do we have another net company? I mean, if we want to get another quote, we get another quote. Um, and I don't, I still, I mean, do we, do we, I mean, is it, 
Um, the beginning of the year, last year, we were this year we were talking about cart path work on, or excuse me, cart path work and bunker work on the second hole. Um, we've been discussing, I mean, our article didn't get in the most recent town meeting, so we're talking about putting another article in the fall town meeting. So if in fact, if we're going to go forward with bunker work, irregardless of what you may decide to do with the T, you're still going to exceed the number of, was it, Dave, 10,000? 10, over 10 you have to at least get quotes, yes. Yes, so over, so over 10. So in order to get quotes, we have to have, you know, construction documents, specifications, or what have you. So you're still going to have to go. Um, Steve, I have to partially. ask another question since we're talking yeah. about bunkers. Uh, we sent the person over there the other day to go and look at number two. You, you, you looked for you, you talked to you. And you said, I don't have time to, to go see it with you. Man, I'm, sit, I'm sitting on I mean, a sprayer, spraying fairways. Just, I can't just, just stop. You don't need to, well, don't need to show them. We're trying to get people as quick as we can. Man, do you really, I mean, out. I can't sit out there and stop. I don't if know I your stop, schedule. And I go back to the, well, then the person, we'll if you don't know my schedule, all you have to do is call up and say, Steve, try, so, 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 like the visit. Nobody, nobody called me. I got a call from the pro shop saying someone was here. I'm out in the middle spraying fairways. I've got 45 minutes before play catches up to me. I go inside, talk, go over to the second green, look. Then I go back out. The wind's blowing at 15, 20 miles an hour, and I've got golfers standing in the middle of the fairway, and I can't, you know, legally speaking, I'm not supposed to be out That's there still spraying. That's the to spray, isn't it? That? that kind of wind? Yes, that's why I'm doing it so early in the morning, so I get it done. I'm just well, giving you, you the. You I'm giving you the. I'm giving you the scenario. If I had left the sprayer, and gone go. in to meet with so. this person, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if so I want to go to the doctor's yourself. office, I don't show up the doctor's so office and say, "Come so. see me." So I make an appointment uh -huh. or call. Right, so you're on the tee, and if you hit the ball that way, it's going to hit that fence that's curved out. You're aiming for, you're aiming for the for the tee, uh, the, the green over here. Green, yeah. You don't need a fence. Suppose the guy that hits really a, a big broom or meringue there or whatever you call it is going to go to the house no, anyway. If you see the way that the, the, the fence is it, it aimed around like that, so you get hit from behind the curve. This is the house here, right? Yeah, and so you see how the fence is, the shop fence curved like that? And you hit from behind the fence. No matter how, how you hit it, it's going to hit that fence before it goes any, over any place. You don't have to be 150 yards or so. Just about 35, I mean, 40 yards. A left hander can hook that right around there. You can, the left hander and right hander are going to tee up from the same spot. Yeah, but we swing that way and you swing this way. What difference does it make? <laughs> the ball's going to go out. It, it can't that go out. It can't go out that way. So I don't know. Right, that, that's an idea. I, I will welcome any ideas that we can save some money. I mean, I hate to spend all the hot money that we have. We have to try to put a little bit of weight to build a clubhouse. I think we're getting nowhere. The question is, do we even want fifteen? Do we do we want to turn it into a par three, or do we want to try to save it as a par four? Par I'm trying three. to save it as a par four. And it, I, I've heard that from Andy, and I believe John Abbery was expressing concern about maintaining the par seventy-two. Right. So. The easiest way, if we try to salvage it as a par four, would be look at the net. Oh, not necessarily, because I still, I mean, you could lengthen the, uh, as when discussing this with Isaac, I said you could lengthen the 13th hole to a par five. Right, so then it becomes even more expensive, right? So well, not necessarily. So, I mean, it's still, you put a new tee on 15 and you put a tee box on 13, you're not paying as much as you will for the posts and the fence and the future maintenance of the well, posts. Right. Let me throw this out there, too. So, let's say that the other case get, that gets is in appeal right now and, and they change the decision and they decline the, the settlement. If we just put a tee box, it's only cost us 25000 mm -hmm. and then we go, all right. Guess what? We're going back to being a par four, and we're going to keep it right. the way it is. Right. Whereas if we put up a two hundred thousand or one hundred seventy-five thousand dollar net, and and the appeal, um, the appeal wins, uh, we, we just spent all that money for a net. 
Okay. Well, we're going to wait until this case comes up. I don't know. No, I'm just, put, I'm just putting ideas and trying to think uh, ahead of the game. Is there a lawsuit? There is a lawsuit. It was, it was a lawsuit where somewhere's in the cane. Oh, and then they give them five million dollars. Well, it was in Kingston. Yeah, so. it but it did get appealed. Yeah, it was some crazy amount, but yeah. It's, it's Put a few broken windows. Yeah. yeah. I mean, personally, I mean, cost aside, I'm just not a fan of what this is going to look like for us. It ain't look like for any of the neighbors that are over there. Isn't that? Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. And, and then the yeah. neighbors can go complain to, to the house. Yeah, that gentleman in that brick house is and not going to like that. Aesthetically, it is but going to look like a right. abomination. Yeah, it's going to look like guarantee. a bat cage. I mean, you look yeah, into the back side of your golf course is a beautiful golf course. It's open, plenty of space. And, it, and, and even on that hole, which is close to the neighborhoods, you got one guy right there by the tee, very nice house, mm -hmm. keeps his landscaping up, nice fountain out front like and everything. Huh? It's going to look like a driving range. Huh? It's going to look like a driving range. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah, it, it is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a driving range. And I'm fine with it. Personally, I'm fine with a par three. So. And I don't understand what, again, um, somebody needs to explain the significance of going maintaining a par 72 and if it is that significant then again i say you can spend less money and do the same thing and i don't understand why trying to save our money you want to spend 175 grand on a bloody fence i, I would throw this out there with, with steve on this issue if you look at our main number we use it as a pot three we beat last may June. It looks like we're going to come damn close, if not beat last June. It's been a pot three for these two months. It's not turning out the volume of play. So, and, and with I'm, that in mind, but I'm not saying you know, get used to I'm playing just, it like that. I'm just well, the other thing too is, I mean, like I, like oh, yeah. Isaac said, you could be, you would be unique in the area. You'd have three par fives in a row. And he so, said some yes. people would like that, but then again, he said some people or wouldn't like that. But he right. said a lot of people might like that. Because they get through the front, they're a little bit behind. They right. get to three par three, fives in a row. And say, geez, you know, I can pick up a stroke here somewhere, right? Or two, hopefully, maybe. One or two. So yeah. hopefully, so if so I hit right. So <laughs> we could start out agreeing that we're going to convert it to a par three, see how our customers read. Mm -hmm. If in fact there's an issue with seventy-two versus seventy-one, we have the option of converting the thirteenth to a par five. Mm -hmm. which makes sense to me and it keeps the aesthetics of the property everything in, in line. I mean so we can still look at the, get a quote if you yeah, want Yeah, we still get a quote. Let's see where it lands. Get a quote. You know what I mean? No, there are just a slow that places one that one. we have on our course over there is pot trees. Pot fours are not small. Yeah. I mean now you're going to increase it's yes. going to be a lot slower. That, that's true. You've already got the number you got three or four pot trees, yes. and then you're going to add one. You're going to have five pot trees. Mm -hmm. no, that's then you get the third hole that right. is considered a pot tree, and uh, then you got the fifth hole that is another pot tree. Yeah, I, I mean those are already doing a lot of pot trees. I don't. I don't, I don't that necessarily think the, 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 the fifth hole, the third hole, and the fifth hole are pot trees. Well, I mean they all. I mean stack people. Up. People think they are. But how many? <laughs> I mean, so in the park and watch how many reached. people blast the ball into the woods they, on the right side of the hole. I know, but they don't move out there. of there. They don't move out of there until the people are walking out of the green. That, that is true. On the so they let a guy. They don't take a three wood out instead of hit a driver. Or a five wood or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, regardless of what you do, the rest of the golf course they're going to do that anyway guy because they think they're right. well, 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 not Usually, you lay it as a pot four. Right, three, two guys will try and lay a shot out. Two guys will always pull out driver and go for it. It just that's. Oh, yeah. yeah, but that I mean, you look at the hole. I mean, well, not so and much. Not, I mean, the same thing. The guy goes on the I can pick up a stroke if I can get there. You're going for it. Everybody you know? thinks they're Tiger Woods, but I'm you know, not. Hey, I'm not on the really tour, but there's some of the excitement of me playing. I mean, if I, I mean, I, I watch people. Some people can almost drive the fifth, the fifth hole if they hit the ball right. And you look at them when they get down there, and they're a pitching wedge away from the pin. Mm -hmm. You know, and they usually end up with a four or a five anyway. True. But I mean, just the exhilaration but they of being able to do that, You know, that's why they can wait. Hey, I mean, and it does. I mean, 14, 15 year old kids now. They get yes. up there and rip the ball out of their socks. They're driving the ball. I mean, you On know, one, oh. from the tips, past the cot signs. Past Who's the that? Who's 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 that
my grandson at, what is it, was Monday on policeman's thing. On uh, number four, he had a ball from the from the greens. Was we were playing blues, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he played the blues. It pumped yeah. the blues. That's the the the. It passed the, the the you know the the bunker in the middle. The bunker in the middle of the grid. There, it was yeah. on the other side. We had seventy eight yards to the green. Yeah, that, that's a ball. I I, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, a, a, a pitch and match, and I was like that away. We got to even need a little. God, God bless him if he can hit the ball like that. You know, mm -hmm. he, he he put it there. You tell me you hit all no. So you think he's gonna come up to the next hole and say, I'm gonna hit a three wood on this one? No. no. He's, gonna, he's gonna pull out <laughs> that driver and put it on the green. <laughs> but that's <laughs> I mean, I think we're creating another headache. That is Just possible. You know for a second that you would you would still, like at least midway, like maintain the other tees that we're not using already. You're not gonna let them like grow over into rough. Okay? No, I wouldn't let them grow over, but the part of the idea of saving money in the construction process is to you use the fill it. and whatever, you know, was out there to make those tees, bring that, you know, down to ground level and grade it, take that material, move it forward and build the other one. So See, you yeah, save some my thing you is save some costs. To move that tee, the back tee more towards the bunker on the other side, you make all these heroes that they think they can hit a mile they got to hit right over the point. There's no alternative for them. And move the T the towards the bunker on on uh, 14. Then they, they don't have uh, another route other than you got to go over the point. Well, I don't then know. Then they're going to spend a lot of money on golf balls. Making those and those those or you, got, you hit somebody's house with a golf right. ball and you get, you know, it's... And we can sit here uh, hot I tonight and talk about that. So... So we get we find somebody else to get another fence quote from number one number two we you know I we think we got to think a little bit more and I think that decision that was made to make that a part three was uh, should involve more people to make that decision than just three guys to well, make that decision um, and that's sure. uh, that I hey you know what that's my feeling that's the way I feel and that's the way I would we didn't make we received we didn't make any decision for the town of Cushnet and. You're supposed to do this. You go do out this. and do it. And so we went out and let's go. I mean, you know. well, we went, open the gates. Fine. Yeah. But now we need to rethink what we're sure. we, no, we, yeah. we Whatever, we, whatever you guys want to do. Where we are yes, and where we're going. Out. Yep. Right. So, so in the interim, we're going to hold it as a part. That's fine. We're going to look at someone to see if we can get another quote. No, we're. we're the, the initial quote we got was from Texas. Who, who did you? It was from Florida. Yeah. Uh, that was from uh, Dave. Dave got that. Yeah, right, right. Now, you were quoting it. You were saying a fence. At back nine. At back nine. We'll take a look at it. So we can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have a little beautiful, beautiful uh, practice facility over there. And uh, See the, how tall that is. That, that type of fence I said to Isaac, that might work on right. on 15. But they're you up probably there. only need 150 yards. Three three telephone poles and a netting. Well, we'll have to get we'll have to get somebody to actually come out and look at it right. because then yes. they can give right. us a better right. estimate of what they're proposing to do. And, and you should take to, oh, you should go to, we should take also. a drive over to the back nine and look at Why it and see what you think. Because I think there's you know what I mean. There's enough no side to having the judgment. You need you need some the rest of us substantial to hold that pole in place. Something that they they go down they they. I mean, I've had a pole put, right. put in my pocket and right. what I have, Telephone quite a few there. Behind. And it cost yeah. me Telephone a thousand bucks for the pole yeah. and Much put it in and tied a wire to it. I just can't see how these guys charge so much money to put a pole on there. No, no, I, I agree with you. It well, unfortunately, is. that's what the goal rate is. I know, I mean, I had one, I had three already. I mean, I got plenty of the amount that we put, but the last one I put was a year or a year ago. And uh, it was a local guy that did it. When we had a drill, he used to work for. They liked to come in, bought their truck, and uh, and they have pole stores somewhere. Let's get him. That I bought the pole, yeah. and uh, and he went over there, the corner one, and pole in, pounded the dirt, and it goes deep enough. that all these ones on the street, they don't have any base to it. It's just a hole in the pole there. I know it's only about 40 feet though, too, right? 
Oh, you pulled like twice. Twenty feet is quite a. It's a little bit of. Well, the thing, the know thing, you know, I don't know, but if if you're over there, that close to someone's house. You might want to have something engineered because if you just go over, I mean, at least some something looked at engineered wise. Because if that ends up in somebody's living room and he's, oh well, we just dug a hole and stuck it in there, you're going to be paying for you know more than you would if you didn't be a nice couple. The neighbors could be all upset too, blocking their view of a beautiful golf course. Yeah, and you get a lawsuit for that. Oh, Fernando that lives in the brick house, he'll go over there and choke him to death. <laughs> All right, so we'll so get I'm that. Sorry, I didn't mean that. So I'll hold, hold <laughs> the ideas, hold it as a part three for now and get another quote for the fence. Yes. Well, yes. We're, we're now, do we have any, are we, do we have any desires whatsoever in the future to do or this fall? I mean, are we going to do any of this bunker work? Do we want to do any of it? Uh, because again, you know, in, unless you do one bunker, I mean, you know, right now your your costs are going to be, you know, seven to eight, nine thousand dollars per bunker easily. And um, I thought we had an employee that we hired the second to the or the third. Um, what do you call it? The third assistant. That we had a second work. assistant. Excuse me. Second. We had a third assistant second. that his main duty was going to be working in bunkers, right? Yeah, he he's going to be he he'll be work he works on bunkers now, but like I say, you know, and you'll see in the report further along, you know, we're too short, so we have to cover what we need to cover because we have to take care of you know what what the client base is expecting. And besides, I mean, I got a forty horsepower backhoe that's eleven years old. If you want to, you know, you know, if you want to get, I mean, a, hey, uh, look, I'm not like I'm just quoting with, with, with what was yeah. spoken in this committee. Next move. And if you want to, I mean, if you want to do, I mean, if you want us to do bunker work, then um, I'm not going to do you it. You know, Kevin and I can sit down and see what it's see what it's going to cost. See what we're going to try to do. I mean, filling in bunkers are isn't ex it, it, it it's particularly <laughs> fine, but I think that the bunkers should be lined, and I think that the synthetic liner or the capillary concrete is the way to go. You put the synthetic liners in there, the bloody coyotes tear them up, the machine pulls it up. We spend more time putting the synthetic, burying the liners that we put in there than we, uh, and the capillary concrete bunker doesn't wash out. Hey, so wash out yeah, yeah. Krishna Valley is not a team that's going to have the, the United States Open or the, all the pros playing over here. We don't that, have to man, that has, nothing, around. That has sure. nothing to do with it. There are golf courses which have $200,000 budgets that put in uh, capillary concrete in the base of some of their bunkers or other things. It's not, this is not, we, you know, we, the, we, the we big, I mean, anybody, you know, if you're going to put a bunker liner in, they're either doing a billy bunker um, or capillary concrete bunker, or the, there's a new one now that's a, uh, if you're going to do a liner, that's um, that's a synthetic you know, material based on rubber. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's if we're know, not if we're not doing all of them, if if we do the ones that constantly are a problem at like eighteen, we haven't had any issues with that since it was done. So obviously, it's somewhat effective. So oh, if, we did if, we, if we did four on the left, and there's no yes, problem with it. Right. So, so all we have needs to be etched, and there's no concrete there, right? We did eleven. No, we did eleven, and it's fine. It's no no. Yes. No concrete there, and it needs to be etched. That's all. Uh, operations update. <laughs> well, just just back to uh, you. We got a quote, quote from Tim to perform in overseeing yeah. building of fifteen, but and that was twenty one thousand. Yeah, that, that, that's the, the, the fee do, outline. Do, do, do we need an RFP to or get another bid for that, that activity? Technically, for that type of work, no, we don't. But, like architects, designers, is exempt in that instance. It, it that exempt. Uh, yes. So we can take that as is, right? Yeah, you have to start. He, he, gives, you, he gives you a rundown of, of phases. You have a conceptual renovation planning, you know, 4,145, preliminary design, permitting. And of course, you don't know what the permitting is going to be, but I don't necessarily think we have any permitting issues out there. 
at least not on 15 and with bunker work I don't think we have any either construction documents you know 4965 4965 um, uh, construction procurement and then construction administration so yeah the total comes to 21680 if you want to just pull bunkers out of it and do something different that might change it somewhat I don't for, know for, like, for, for just like 15 excuse me just for whole 15 yeah if you wanted to just do 15 pull the bunkers out completely I'm sure he would you know I would I would what I would do to tell him is okay here's what um, you know how about if we can we pull this down just to the 15th hole right and okay. although I mean and even you know, you're right there the 14th bunker would make that big of a difference but that would be you know right so let's do that see if we can get that and we'll get the quote of, of a, another net mm -hmm. netting and then try to make a decision on whether we're going to keep this as a part three or salvage it as a part pay twenty four about twenty one thousand dollars for that to get that is that what we're going to pay twenty one thousand dollars to get that it was to do the 15 and all the bunk bunkers overseeing all of them so take all the other stuff out well that we that's, that's, that's one the project well that's the uh, whole estimate. that's the whole thing i mean right. again you have you know if you if you read through the proposal each phase is outlined and what's what would be done in and I'm not going to read the whole thing but I for instance phase one upon notification to proceed uh, Gardner Garrison to prepare a 40 scale or greater existing conditions plan these are the phases that you go through in order to do golf course projects I mean you're at the country club when Ron Forrest came in there and did all that work over there at the country club he didn't do it on a piece of paper in the back of his pocket he came with conceptual plans, designs, he came with bid documents, he came with specifications, and so on and so forth. And, you know, that being a private entity, they didn't have to go out to bid. Do you want, do you want to talk about the country club? Well, those things were all done by one man that nobody ever seen any plans. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? You had, you had the architect there. I'm just saying, okay? So let's get him over here. See what he's got to yeah. say. Yeah, well, he could have been here one time and he got knocked off. So, you know. Anyway, so. Fifth, uh, just, just to do 15. And would you. Would you want. Um, would you want to consider the. Uh, a, a second buck or a additional T on 13 to make it a par 5? I don't know. I mean. No, no. Let's no, just do 15. Just do 15. I mean, that, that would be down okay. the road. Yeah. One bite at a time. Makes sense. Let's go that. Let's just move through the operations up. Yeah. There. Uh, real quick, I, I mean, most of what I had was I uh, discussed with regards to um, the volume of play, where we're at in the season, and the only thing I guess I can really put to it is um, as we're heading into the final week, I've held off on uh, replenishing anything in the pro shop. We are very low in stock on, on a lot of stuff. We had a very cool spring, if you want to call it a spring. And so jackets and shirts and hats, everything kind of flew off in the last three weeks. So we are near depleted of inventory. So as soon as we hit July 1, I'll uh, put together some orders and get that stuff replenished. And then John... Um, but you, you can get that orders in now, right? All uh, right. Uh, yeah, I can put the orders in as long as they're delivered after July yeah, one. Right. Yeah. So I have been I've been getting some um, some logos for all the stuff and getting that together. Um, and then John uh, assisted with our uh, cushion at Lions event and uh, the warmers um, he brought we borrowed and they worked out real well. They were not electric ones and I did have a couple people say the food was like lukewarm so I was telling them if I was going to do the warmers outside I would like to get the ones that plug in because then you can just set the temp and then you don't have any worries and they were very effective and I kind of regret not having those 20 years ago because that would have made my job a heck of a lot easier as I was running up and down the stairs 40 yards from the kitchen with pans in my hand but that's 50,000 calories ago you were younger than that yeah now I walk gingerly with one tray. Mm -hmm. So, no, so no, what no. kind of walk is that? Uh, I, I haven't, I'm going to get a quote. Get a quote how do you want to get electricity there? To, to I, I have electricity wired. That's how we do the refrigeration truck. 
So you're going to have the box? The boxes. Yep. And then you Stack. put the pens right on there and right you in. put them into those yep. warmers. Yep. Yeah, that's how we do it. So, but it, um, John did get a taste of some double wide cooking and uh, <laughs> he did wide. admit that it is not an easy process. Um, so I, I welcomed him to the club. Are the summer students on board? Yes, we have. I have all. Um, I have one more to get uh, his paperwork through, and all the kids are in. Most I had them work through them in the fire. They all worked this week through this uh, for uh, dinner events, and they are a, a well-oiled machine right now. So we're we're good, and um, I think that's. Hey, I, I know the kid. The kid did a nice job on my hot dog. I usually got print hot dogs over there, but this one was nice <laughs> and it was good. Only the thing, I, chef, yeah. only thing I, I wish I had was a toasted bun, but that's all right. I, I go without it. But the hot dog was very nice. He kind of out of the hot dog. Have a bun toaster, good. right? We, I, oh, I, I saw the marks in the real yeah, marks. That's we what I trained. I just hit me with the real marks. We don't want style hot dogs. I'll tell you where the help wanted it signed. That's that's for Yeah, but but it was good. I'll tell you. Excellent. Well, that's that's what we're striving for. So we. They all went off without a hitch, and, and all the kids are now well versed in what it's going to take in the cleanup process and working as a team. So it was uh, very effective. Appreciate it. Good to have. And then maintenance update. Um, just a few things. Um, we touched on a couple of them already, so we'll be short. Um, so far, so good. Uh, course conditioning wise, um, a lot of compliments. Tons of compliments. Uh, we're in good condition going into the hot months of July and August. Um, I wanted to just mention at this point uh, to commend the folks that I have working out there. Um, they've, uh, we've had a lot of 4.30 uh, a.m. starts. Uh, we've had a lot of 1 and 10 starts off the first tee at 6 and 10 in the morning on the weekends. And we've been able to get things uh, accomplished and prepared before people um, uh, caught up to us. and. and uh, uh, where things were prepared, um, so I just wanted to, to mention that. And um, again, we'll be we'll be uh, busy again till we get through this month. We've got uh, this coming uh, weekend um, with uh, an outing. We have one of our biggest outings of the year on Monday, and then the following Friday we have another outing at an eight o'clock shotgun on Friday morning. So for the first of July to start off July on the right foot, hopefully. So. Um, I did want to also mention um, that uh, back on the, the 13th of June, I mean, I think you all know that um, we've been, haven't got as much rain um, and we've been in and out of drought conditions uh, on the 13th of June. The, the Secretary of Energy and Environment Affairs in Massachusetts issued a level two significant drought for the Northeast and the Southeast. What that means for us is, is that in you know if the you know the drought conditions get any worse, we'll have to, uh, within our water uh, management permit, um, we were asked uh, to draw up um, you know our contingency plan for when we get into drought circumstances, significant drought circumstances, what we would be watering, what we wouldn't be watering, and so forth. We haven't had to implement that yet. Um, we've been lucky to get a little bit of water um, on, on some evenings. And um, with the use of wedding agents and whatnot, we've been able to curtail some of the, uh, you know, the browning of certain areas on the golf course. But you're going to start to notice probably um, that the rough's going to go dormant a little bit earlier than normal um, just because of the lack of water. And the ground is as hard as a rock. Um, and it's, it's just not absorbing what water we are putting out there. Um, you know, we're good greens and predominantly tees. You may see a little bit in the fairways, but that just goes uh, with the drought, drought conditions. We monitor soil moisture um, and we uh, fine tune our irrigation uh, just to conserve as much as we can. And um, but we do have to maintain a certain level of playability to keep our clientele happy. So. We'll be working on that next couple months. I mean, we get a little bit of rain on Monday, and it looks like we're going to get into actual summer temperatures next week, and mm -hmm. there isn't any rain till the 
possibility even until the end of the week. So um, we could use a little bit, but uh, right now we're about four or five inches below what we, uh, we normally have. Um, with this, we may have to start syringing greens in the afternoons um, when necessary to help prevent wilt and to, um, to cool them down. And a lot of times, especially on our course where we get as busy as we do, there really isn't, you really can't do syringing without getting, you know, in, involved with golfers. There's just no two ways about it. Um, we'll do what we can with the hose. When we can sneak in, we use the overheads. The hose is actually um, does a better job, but it's more labor intensive and takes a little bit more time. You can't get to as much as you normally would with the overheads. But we'll see how that goes in the next uh, couple weeks when things really start to get hot. As far as equipment goes, um, as I mentioned earlier, the 3400 diesel triplex for mowing tees, collars, and approaches in par three fairways. So we ordered back in June of 2021. It was delivered uh, on the 14th of June, 2022. Total cost, 55,584.09. At this past uh, selectman's meeting, board of selectman's meeting on the 21st, I presented that and the idea of paying for that with encumbered funds of 32,376.90, residual of Article 908.000 with 12,878.40, and the residual of Article 908.001, which is 12,609.73. Um, that was approved by the Board of Selectmen. Um, in the end, when all is said and done and the two invoices, one for the machine and the verticut reels are paid for, you'll have a balance of $2,189.94 on Article 908001. Steve, just for, for information only, yeah. what is now since we have rollers and we've been sending the greens, what's that speed on the greens? Our speed right now on, on a regular basis is right around 10, um, especially with, um, we've been doing a couple other things. We have a, uh, we have a, um, an interesting uh, brushing concept that was um, actually created by another superintendent in Massachusetts. Um, they're called turf trainers. Um, we use them on our greens two or three times a week and it has really significantly made a difference in the greens being fuller um what it uh, well, what happened when you when you brush said they're faster this, this uh, season when when well when you brush them consistently the turf stands up straight and when the turf stands up straight the rest of the ground can get s more sunlight so basically what you do in the end is you create a thicker stand if you have a thicker stand and you're able to, you know, keep your uh, keep your height uh, low enough, and through the top dressing get a firmer stand. Then you're going to get a quicker ball roll. Now I'm, I'm hoping we can get this um, this uh, um, lease through, so then I can, you know, I can start putting, I can roll, start rolling two days a week, and that'll make it even more of a difference. But I, I try to I try to gauge when we're going to try to speed things up. Or slow them down. I mean, I really can't. Like Monday, Monday is not going to be a good day to try to speed things up because I've got you know, 150 people out there, and and you know we don't want them to have a seven-hour round. They're going to have a six-hour round as it is, and that makes his planning and his scheduling more difficult because you're sitting there saying, okay, they're supposed to be off mm -hmm. an hour later. They're still not off. So you know we've got to measure that and you know when we come up with club championships and that kind of thing okay yeah then we tweak it a little bit higher um, and then some some days of the week we like to tweak it a little bit more when we have the extra time so but I'd say right now on a consistent basis you're probably right around 10. I haven't I've been kind of busy this week spraying and whatnot so I haven't measured anything uh, or haven't stipped anything this week. We actually have a um He's not a weekly player, but every maybe two or three times a year, the grandson of the guy that created the stiff beater, he actually plays on track, which is, I thought was pretty cool. He was talking about the engineering and, and um, uh, getting the, uh, the patent on it and whatnot. That's cool. Yeah, very cool. And then uh, 
last thing, um, well, we, we've already discussed the proposed equipment, so we can skip over top of that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, staffing-wise, um, we're down uh, two positions. One uh, was a part-time or seasonal position, and the other was a full-time. Um, and what I, we, I had someone who I had hoped would be able to fill one of those. Unfortunately, uh, when I uh, called him last week, he had backed out and gotten a position uh, a full-time position somewhere else, um, not in this particular industry. And then I received a, uh, a lead from uh, Dana the other day that uh, I've been pursuing. I've got to get this gentleman in to uh, sit down and talk with him, see what his experience is, see what his interests are, and see if there's something we can work out. Um, I'd like to be able to get someone in before our, we have three college students now possibly a fourth depending on if he pursues postgraduate stuff that we you know they're going to have different schedules in the fall when they go back to school um, so that's going to impact our staff somewhat so hopefully we can um, we can find a seasonal part-time or one full-time position to position to fill I'm rather surprised that I haven't really come across any retired folks recently and then when I say recently the last year and a half two years um, I did uh, mention this at the selectmen's meeting, and we're going to uh, put something on the, uh, the town's Facebook page. I have to send the uh, the information over to uh, the new girl. I think her name is Eileen. I'm not sure. Uh, the the new girl in the office there. Um, and last but not least, um, you know, we're quickly approaching the uh, the end of FY 2022. And it, unless my recollection is off, we have really yet to discuss pay rate increases, if any, for supervisory staff or non-hourly wage staff. Um, and I'm just putting this out there because if, in fact, anything is going to be done, there has to be paperwork and everything else filled out and get signed. Half and forms. P what are they call PAFs have to be filled out because the... Uh, the year again is quickly coming to an end. We have two different payrolls to do at the end of the year. One for the for uh, that goes through the thirtieth, which is a week from today, mm -hmm. and then since our pay periods end on Saturdays, we have one for the first and the second that has to be done the day after the one through the sixth has to, or the thirtieth has to be done. So, um, if anything is going to be done in that regard, um, we need to know so we can move forward. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, when Dana and I sat down at the uh, selectmen's meeting to discuss the budget, um, the selectmen basically looked at us and said, you're an enterprise fund, that's your deal. So no, I deal. Not our your, deal. That your deal. You guys <laughs> deal. So um, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that's, it on I'm assuming that's deal true. with all the other things. <laughs> Why should we deal with them? So I, I, I don't know. So I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Um, you know, if yes, okay, we'll see what we do. If no, then that's the determination. I just need to know where we're gonna, gonna go if anywhere because I do have people asking questions, and I have a, you know, a couple, you know, one in particular, very deserving person who's really getting hammered by the 14 percent increase in health insurance, and I don't understand how one. In this day and age, could look at how costs have gone up recently, including that health insurance cost, and not at least consider something resembling cost of living, because people are losing money; they're lo making less money than they they did in the prior year. And again, this isn't normally done for these particular positions until the first of the year, because it's calculated into the new budget. Um, I don't know what's happening in the rest of the town. I don't know what's happening with department heads or so forth, but um, I thought I'd throw that out there and, and just for comment. Don't we usually get guidance from the town administrator at least? I mean, they can say, you know, you're an enterprise fund, but we're going to um, be ridiculous. We're going to roll and say, oh, everybody gets a 20% raise. Well, we're not going to do something, right. right? So there has to be some sort of concession of a range at least normally given my recollection is correct, given to us by or through the town administrator, correct? Right. Correct. So should you take on that responsibility to check with the town administrator and see what his understanding is? 
Schwarz. This card is cool. Make it up on holy. Give yourself enough okay. that, That's all I've got. Question for you. June top dressing. Did we complete complete those? Yes, we did the first two, was it the first two Mondays? The we Mondays did. that we didn't have outings. We did top dress, yeah. we top dressed on both of those days. All, all the greens. All 19 greens, top dress, brushed in, watered, you know, watered when necessary prior to play getting started. I mean, that's, that's the whole benefit of those couple of extra hours. In bringing that up, that is also, you guys are going to make that determination of what we're doing through the uh, peak Yeah, season. because we only held that through, 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 June. I mean, through June. So what's... I'm glad um, you actually mentioned that. Yeah. So um, we we're supposed to, you know, see if we we're going to we continue um, with the maintenance Monday. And, and if so, I mean, what we have been doing is um, what we did for those two is um, I had my staff start at 5 o'clock and the T-she started at 10 instead of 11. So I brought my guys in an hour earlier. Um, so which we need, need to do two top, top dressing in July. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to do two a month. I do one every two weeks as soon as I can get out there. So I think we ought to do maintenance money. Decide schedule wise which which ones. And I, I don't think we have any outings, right? Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't looked we'll past. The, the, I haven't looked past fr next Friday. Most, well, most well, outings get them done in June because yeah. they don't right. they don't want to deal with that Nobody stuff wants on their vacation. Yeah. Yeah, right. But the next thing is you've got to be pay attention to schedule hours on Mondays. So on the well, what we did is we looked at afternoon. we looked at the schedule, and Steve said, "Look, you got outings on those two Mondays, so we should go back to back on June on the maintenance Mondays for the first two. And I was like, "Yeah, those are the only two open." So, so let's that's yeah, what we same did. Thing in July. And well, the first, the fourth of July is the first Monday, so that's out. Um, Why not put them the holiday? Huh? Oh, yeah, I'll be right out there in the holiday <laughs> top. I'd be making everybody happy. <laughs> so, what's the month? Yeah, so the 11th would probably be the first one. And then, um, so let me we'll do see. do the 11th, and then we'll just check, check the schedule and put right. the second one where we need yeah, to. Yeah, without, without and, looking and at the schedule, Mondays are 11, 18, and 25. We're aerating in August rather than in September because we're booked in September and the guy I think you said yeah. only so that's yeah the only time he had on the schedule for us that's so. going to be one of the maintenance Mondays in, in that month yeah so we're going to be out right on August late I yeah mean, late August what about October we're good hmm? well October we're going to we're going to do a, a different a different process but again I like to wait you know because of our schedule, I like to get past. What is it? Columbus Day in the middle of the schedule. We have Oktoberfest, and then we have yes. Columbus and I've Day. actually got outings this year, almost into the third week of October. Yeah. So once we get past, once we get past our outings, you know, if I change the method and the process we do, um, you know, it, it, it will be beneficial. It can be just as beneficial at that time of year, especially if we're getting something done in August. The season used to end Oktoberfest the first weekend of October and that was it. Oktoberfest was the last outing but now they're going into the third week of October so that's what they want. What do we got? 7, 14, 21, 28. I don't think I can do the 21st. Can't do the 21st? I don't think I know I all day training thing at work, and I'm not quite sure what time it's going to get out. So July, yeah. So 7, 14, 21, 28. 28? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Here's. Yep. So July 28. Or third? Sure. Yeah. So the motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good night.